What's up everybody, my name is Shannon and I am still waiting for my Seder and today we are talking about Rogue Wave, Dark Tide, and Sea Spell, the last three books in the Waterfire Saga by Jennifer Donnelly. So I decided to talk about all three of these books together because I read them all very close together and they are all very similar. I had originally made an individual video for each of these books, but because they are so similar, my opinion of them was all basically the same, so I thought I would just go ahead and talk about all three of them at once and I will say this is still largely going to be spoiler free but obviously some spoilers from Rogue Wave and Deep Tide will be unavoidable so if you are wanting to avoid those at all this is your warning now. So I was very surprised by Deep Blue the first book in this series it wasn't at all as I was expecting it was really really fun and it made me excited to continue on with the rest of the series so I did listen to Rogue Wave and Dark Tide and then obviously I read Sea Spell because I have it right here. All of these books are very similar in the tone and the pacing and everything stayed pretty much constant throughout all of the books. So if I was going to rate them as a whole, pretty much they all get like a B plus or a B minus. It was just all very negligible, the differences between them. What I didn't like though, is that I feel like this author should not have picked six characters to be her main group here. Because in the first book, we are introduced to two of them mainly. Like we have Sarah, who's telling most of the story. We do get a little bit of Neela. We get introduced to Ling, that kind of stuff. So expectation going into the rest of the series is that we were going to explore the rest of our ladies a little bit more in depth and yeah no not exactly when we get into rogue wave we do get a lot more neela still getting more sarah but mostly a lot more neela that was kind of like okay i guess this is the way that you're gonna go we get a little bit of ling as well but the last half of this main six is all but forgotten in this book what i do like is that we do get a fair bit of world building in the second book we do get to learn a little bit more about the the politics, a little bit more about the dynamics, a little bit more about this occupation that's going on with Cerulea, what's going to be expected of Sarah, we've got a rebellion forming up, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, we are getting a little bit of things. Largely, though, I would describe Rogue Wave as more of a bridge just connecting Deep Blue to Dark Tide, because with Dark Tide, we do get some more meteor bits here and there, because we do get a lot more going on with this rebellion. We do get to finally see a lot more Becca and a lot more Astrid. We learn that there is a lot going on with Astrid and that she's really meant to be one of the heavy hitters going on with these books, but still there's just not a ton. It seems whenever we would focus on one, we would lose somebody else. So like we're still not getting any Ava, we're still getting just hints of Ling here and there. And that was just starting to get really frustrating and it was making me kind of feel drained on this series because by the time I got to see Spell, I wasn't really excited anymore and I knew exactly how this was going to end. Like the way that these books are set up, it's very obvious where we're going. So I wasn't really sure going into the fourth and final book, but I was like, you know what? I've made it this far. I got to keep going. I got to see what's going to happen. And I will say with Sea Spell, it does wrap it all up very nicely, but the pacing is where it really starts to suffer in this book. We spend a lot of time not really doing anything, and we don't spend enough time where the plot, I feel, was moving. So we get a lot more with Astrid, a lot more going on with her character and how she's connected to the villain and all this kind of stuff, but then she's absent for so much of the book, and I understand it's because to build tension and all this kind of stuff. Stuff, but where we were, nothing was really happening. I kept waiting for things to happen. I started skimming through fight scenes because it was the same stuff over and over and over again. And I mean, I don't know what I was expecting because it's not like these books are super media. There's a whole lot going on here, but I feel like this could have been a much shorter book or it should have been less about the resistance in the battle for Cerulea and more about the final showdown with Abaddon. Like that happens in like like the last couple of chapters in the book, it's not really focused on at all. It's not a major plot point. Whereas in the beginning of this book, like that 
that's kind of what was set up to be the major thing going on here. That's why we gotta find the talismans, that's why we've gotta defeat Orfeo, all that kind of stuff. So it was just kind of disappointing. I am happy that I have read it, but I just wish it could have been executed just a little bit differently. So would I recommend this series? Yes, I would. They are very fluffy, they are very cringy at some times, they are very girly, and there's not a whole lot here, but they are really fun reads. I would just maybe space them out a little bit more because they do really run together. But it is still a fun read, and I think as a whole, I would give this series a B minus. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button down below, and don't forget to subscribe so you can talk books with me every week. That is everything I got for you today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!